Hi, I'm Steve Maletto from the Teaching, Learning, Leading K-12 podcast, a part of the Education Podcast Network, just like the show you're listening to now. Shows on the network are individually owned and opinions expressed may not reflect others. Find other interesting education podcasts at edupodcastnetwork.com. Well, folks, it's another day in paradise and another day in the high tech podcast. I don't know if those two things are equivalent, but we are Uh, here. They are. Clearly, when someone is asked if you could take one thing to to an island, if you were stranded on it, what would it be? (laughs) Somebody's going to say a high tech podcast episode because just one that they could listen to. Yeah, just one. Perpetuity. Yeah, yeah, because apparently we're that limited. You get an iPod with just (laughs) not even an iPod. It's a Zoom. It's a Zoom. Oh. With yeah, you, you land on a strand island. It's a Zoom. And it's got one episode of the High Tech Podcast on it. And in that podcast, we make fun of Zooms. That's the only thing that you have. <laughs> My bet is you get three days before you're insane and deciding how to kill yourself. But anyways, yeah. uh, we are here for episode 90 of the High Tech Podcast. Bring the happy vibes. <laughs> <laughs> woo whoop, 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 whoop. Um, Josh and I are pretty excited. You know, this week we are going back into another interview. Last week was an interview as well. We like to bring on more folks into this conversation. Um, this one actually, I think, is finally the best opportunity to dig into that question I dealt with at my last institution, you know, in the pandemic. How do you teach something that seems unteachable in a vid- in a video or digital content? Right. So uh, we're going to have my brother on. Dr. Charles Illingworth will be joining us. He is a doctor. Oh, he's a doctor. I didn't know that. A doctor. Oh. It's awesome. Yeah, he's Look the first uh, Illingworth doctor in my family, at least. Oh. He is going to kind of talk to us about uh, what his experience has been uh, as a student of acupuncture, now being a teacher of acupuncture, but specifically like what it is to try and do it online. They had to pivot and, and do some of that studies during the pandemic um, and some of those things. I'm pretty excited because I know nothing about learning acupuncture. I um, yeah, I've but, never once been asked to teach it. It's odd. I know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> tanks. Tanks is our thing. Yeah. Tanks is our thing. Clearly, everybody calls me for tanks, but <laughs> acupuncture. Nope. No hey, way. Yo, Josh. That's <laughs> actually how every email sent to me starts. <laughs> hey, yo, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway. that's good. Yeah, so uh, you know we're gonna have a good bit of a conversation with us with with this situation. We don't actually uh, full transparency. We don't usually do these intros before we've actually recorded, so yeah. we have no idea what's coming next. I have literally no clue what can end up happening next. For all we know, this episode could not be about acupuncture. We don't know. Yeah, turn Our- turn out to be like it wasn't that exciting of a topic. We got five <laughs> seconds in, and then we were like, yeah, "Thanks," you know. <laughs> pivot. Um, no, I think this will be cool. I'm excited for this conversation. We've talked a lot on this podcast over the last couple of years about uh, like teaching things that seem not teachable online. Um, yeah. The classic always being um, what scuba diving, right? Scuba, yeah, yeah, yeah. Your last institution, yeah. <laughs> so um, I'm interested to hear. I'm really interested actually to hear how this went down uh, and how he learned acupuncture online. And I think it'll help kind of bring out some ideas and principles just to like how teaching online can be creative and how you can get around some of those problems. Um, hopefully who knows, maybe it was a horrible experience. <laughs> it's going to be like, yeah, um, it actually sucked. And I'm not sure why it, I yeah. got that. I'm being hopeful right now. Here we go. It'll work out. It'll work out. Everybody cross your fingers. And we're about to venture in to episode 90, the acupuncture episode. <laughs> let's, let's take a stab. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's turn it over to Charles and see what we can learn. Okay, folks, I'm going to apologize right away. You are going to get Illingworth in stereo this evening, and I don't think it's going to be fun. No, it's going to be fun, but... Oh, it'll be great. It's you know. going to be something. Yeah. Josh um, Josh and I are here tonight with Charles, Dr. Charles Illingworth, my older brother, my senior. Welcome to the podcast, bro. Thank you, thank you. I'm glad to be here. Well... 
you don't have to lie, but it's fine. Oh, um, stop. It's, stop. it's early in the episode. We'll, we'll poll afterwards and see if he still feels that way. <laughs> Spotify gives us polls now. I can do that. Yeah. There yeah, you I'll go. Just use Ask. them on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we did a little bit of prep before, you know, and, and launched the episode to say, Hey, we're going to talk about, you know, kind of some pandemic instruction, whatever. But before we jump too far into that, I did, I did like this question. We were asking in prep, how many degrees do you have and what are they in you forever student? Um, so, uh, I have one bachelor's degree, two master's degrees, one doctorate, a certification, and I'm working on another certification. And he was trying to tell us that he wants to pursue another. I was not. I was not. Doctorate already, too. I I was not uh, trying to tell you. I I was, in fact, telling you that I had my eye (laughs) on a Ph.D. program. uh, But that is a little bit down the the pike. Do or do not. There is no try, my friend. I I know. But uh, there there is an old and uh, sage saying, and that is timing is everything amen to that (laughs) Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. oh well thank you for joining us this is gonna be a lot of fun Um, absolutely we've had friends we've had my sister-in-law we've had uh, randos but a brother is great to have on the important lesson is if you know people who podcast don't talk to them very often or you'll end up on their podcast that's basically (laughs) i mean that's fair that's totally fair. You get too close, you get sucked in. Yeah, exactly. Um, now, you are a new or recent doctor of acupuncture. What's the timeline? When did you start I... this journey and, and what was it like? Don't don't hurt yourself. What? <laughs> Listen here. Uh, so my acupuncture journey started in, tw- in 2015. Um, when I started the master's program, I graduated from that in 2018. I then graduated from the, um, the Chinese herbal medicines certificate, uh, certification program in 2020, mm-hmm. and then graduated with my doctorate in 2021. So okay. that puts you pre, during and post pandemic. Well, yes. no, you, you finished in the pandemic, I guess. So, uh, if, you know, strangely enough, Um, as the pandemic hit, I, uh, was finishing up the herbal certification program and beginning the doctorate program. And as I began the doctorate program, I also began teaching. Oh, oh, okay. You you didn't. Yeah. That was simultaneous. You, you, you end one and start another. Uh, I ended one, started another and another. Yes. Mm -hmm. (laughs) My, my teaching career started simultaneously. I think we need to make a mind map just to track what you just described. Part of course of Charles's progression over time. Oh, gentlemen, that's not even the thick of it. (laughs) This is just the academics. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Because during the acupuncture program, I was, I was working full time and going to school full time. So I was in school 28 hours a week at work, uh, 32 hours a week. And then uh, moonlighting as a photo booth operator on the weekends. I remember that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I used to do uh, photo booths for, uh, for weddings. Okay. When you're an academic and po. <laughs> mm-hmm. 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 Oof. That's yeah. amazing. Um, I have so many questions about so so much of your life, but, um, I think let's, let's focus us right now. Although we should do a separate episode moonlighting as a photo booth operator. Like, that's- Oh, Josh, <laughs> that's not even the tip of the iceberg, man. <laughs> like, I, I don't know if, if William has given you any, any heads up, but I have lived a storied life. Oh, I've, I've heard, I've heard some. Yes. I, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> there's no way oh, i can man. keep my composure with any of those <laughs> <laughs> so focus i guess though like I, I am just super curious when will presented this idea for the episode mm-hmm. um all it took was him to say you got an acupuncture degree while during covid online for me to go okay we need to talk about this so i'm mm-hmm. super curious mm-hmm. like what did that look like what did it like obviously will and i Just like we don't know anything about half the other courses we say we know about, uh, like tanks and things like that. Um, You should hear us describe like 
Intense. What was the one we tried? Counseling or something? We were trying something. Yeah. And it was clear we knew nothing about counseling. Um, but so I know nothing about this topic necessarily, but I'm very mm-hmm. interested. Like, what did it look like? One, just even transitioning into that. And like, what did it yeah. look like to like learn a topic that quite frankly uh, seems very difficult to do online? Uh, I'm really curious what that looked like. Yeah. Did so, you ever needle yourself? Uh, not until I was licensed, actually. Smart. Okay. That's not good. until I was licensed. Um, my uh, to to finish answering that question within the first week of being at school we were told and and this was fear of god moment oh. that if we if we ever needled ourselves outside of school and it was found out we would lose the opportunity to ever become licensed wow oh wow okay so i okay. never actually needled myself outside of being at school and under the direct supervision of a clinician until I was licensed and outside of school. That's a, okay. See, I'm already learning something. Sorry, I di- I distracted. Back to uh, Josh's question. So, the the timeline was such that in March of 2020, uh, the governor closed down the city, or no, the mayor closed down the city of Philadelphia and all small businesses. Well, I in fact own and operate a small business, so I went on unemployment for that entire summer while I was finishing my program. Mm-hmm. What they did, because I was in my clinical internship for the herbal program at that time, I have my license, I have my master's degree, whatever, I'm, I'm in the herbal program, and I'm learning about Chinese uh, medicinal herbs, and everything went online immediately. The problem is, there's an internship that needs to be fulfilled, <laughs> Uh huh. Yeah. Always, <laughs> and so that immediately went online and went went online for a couple months, where we literally just hopped on a Google Meet, or at that time it was actually a Zoom, and uh, we would do case studies. Okay. For hours. Oh. Actually, for six hours because oh. the clinical shifts were six hours long, and we would have to listen to the case studies and write them up and then submit them to the clinical director. So that's how we accomplished the end of the clinical internship during the summer of 2020. Fall 2020 comes around. I'm starting the doctorate program, which was entirely online to begin with, except there was was one course that was supposed to be um, online and in person, but that was in person with a Western medical practitioner. Oh, okay. 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 But because of the state of things and uh, the lack of turnaround time at the time, because um, January of 2020 was when the doctorate program started their fo- first cohort. August of 2020, my cohort was the second cohort. Oh, oh wow. Okay. So three, um, three doctorate classes online in the fall, uh, a lot of reading, a lot of writing, um, a lot of researching. Uh, what else? I would. It, it's honestly a distant memory at this time. But um, <laughs> I was I was contacted in the summer because it's it is impossible to teach everything about acupuncture online. Right. Absolutely impossible. At some point, there's a physical body that needs to be involved at the yeah. least. Well, the starting point needs to involve the physical body because if you're going to learn the point locations it's nice to consider them on a nice little map on the wall that's great except the map on the wall is not a body 2d versus real d right so um they had originally conceived of it and the funny part is the incoming class of 2020 was the largest class the school had had to date with with 30 students. And the building that the school was in at the time was a bank that was built in the (laughs) fifties that the organization had purchased. And so they came up with this brilliant idea that for in-person classes, they would uh, split the classes so that half of the class would be upstairs the other half would be downstairs, which means they had to double the amount of teachers they needed. Right. right. Entre me. Um, <laughs> oh, no. I was 
tapped to work with another uh, colleague, a colleague of mine, doc, Dr. Putnam, to effectively co-teach three courses. Um, surface anatomy and palpation, which you can guess by the name of this class, cannot be taught online. I'm going to have to Google how to spell that class and then yeah. I'll get back to you. On, you know, I was going to say, you're giving me way too you. much credit to actually even understand what you just said. Physically <laughs> 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 touching the body, palpating. It, yes, right? it, is, yeah. it is a class based on touching the physical anatomy, right? yeah. bones and muscles to see where everything is. Yeah, You can't just uh, do that on Zoom? I mean, I have yeah. a copy of Gray's Anatomy down on the, the bottom screen. shelf. Um, there are plenty of other like neat anatomy apps you could use, sure, but uh, they're kind of glitchy. I sure, sure. The, the response time's not great either. I yeah, you. and you don't get any feedback, and it's weird. Yeah. Um, what about operation? Just uh, did anybody ever pull out operation at that all? That is a phenomenal, phenomenal teaching method if you want to teach anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, probably the reason I get heart palpitations on occasion. Anyway, <laughs> we didn't have uh, that game growing up. Where'd you play it? Yes, we did. Your sister and I just destroyed it before you got there. <laughs> Sorry. Third child problems. They saved you. They, they saved That's you true. from yeah, the pain. Thank you. Thank you. From thank a lot you. of different things. And anyway, family history aside. Uh, that's the surface... an episode of Moonlighting as a Photo Booth Operator. Yes, it is, <laughs> which is going to be the name of one of my uh, chapters in my autobiography. Um, <laughs> it, it comes in sequence after Coffee and Bullwhips. Theater, I convinced a director to include a bullwhip in a show, and my warm-up for the show was a coffee in one hand, cracking a whip with the other. <laughs> so, uh, Josh, my brother is nearly the most <laughs> interesting man in the world he's not doseki's interesting I'm, but he is just after doseki's interesting i've already I'm, prepped to buy this autobiography that's all <laughs> all, all i'm <laughs> saying is i have stories so uh surface anatomy palpation was just the one class clinical observation which during the pandemic i was able to do online okay. because I have a clinical table at home. I have a travel kit full of acupuncture needles and yeah, everything that I travel. Need. And I did a treatment on my wife. Okay. And I had the cameras rolling and my students were watching me treat my wife and then asking questions of me, asking questions of her. So that's the wow. only way that I was able to do clinical observation oh, oh. online. Okay. And then uh, point location, right? Acupuncture point location, which we've already discussed to some extent. But for the pandemic, they cut the class in half. It's usually a four-hour class, two hours of lecture, two hours of practical, right? Well, I was only tapped to be one of the co-teachers for the practical portion until mm -hmm. 10 days before the semester started when the lecturer quit. <laughs> So you have had the full Monty yeah. when it comes to huh? academics. You've, you've, I mean, we were recently, we, in chronology, we recently talked to Casey uh, about her experience being a teacher, but that's like seven episodes ago at this point. I don't even know um, where she was hired to be a teacher, like a week before the year started. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like it's, that's just education 101. Welcome. You, so, you are in the, it's called hazing. <sighs> So my co my co teacher Dr. Putnam and I, in ten days, revamped two entire courses. Technically three because the point location course was the the, the lecture and the practical. Right. So in ten days we built these two courses: point location lecture with the practical and the surface anatomy and palpation, so that they were teaching the same things on the same days. Right. Okay. You would go in and you would palpate the body, touch the body in the areas where the channels go. And then you would come to um, point location and then you'd find the actual points. Hmm. So hmm. we layered the, the frameworks in, as, as such in hopes to make it easier. Um, and well, those those students are now uh, about to graduate and well, 
they they still remember those classes. <laughs> I, I don't know if that's fondly, but um, <laughs> it's, uh, when, as, as you all start to to sort, sort that out, and you're you're saying they're coming in, you're and they've mm-hmm. you know we're talking COVID time, so it's just like amount of people. Like we need space per person, we need the right so amount of room, square footage. The, Were they also rotating like stuff online? Oh, while yeah. they were coming into the room? Oh, yeah. So the their regular, all didactic courses that year went online. Okay. If it's a lecture okay. course, it went online. Okay. Okay. Uh, so the lecture portion of the point location was online. And I w- we would do that the day before we would come in, and they would have all of their like hands-on courses in a day. Uh, okay. And one week, half of them would be in the basement with me, and the other half would be uh, on the top floor with Dr. Putnam. And then the next week, they'd switch. And then in between okay. semesters, we would uh, mix them up so that they would have different bodies they could work on. Hmm. I mean, so the big strategy there is just like placement, timing, like where placement, you have the timing, where you have open them. windows, masks, hand yeah. washing. Uh, the like for because. At the time, we also had to, to get temped in. You know, we had people taking our temperatures coming in oh, uh, temperatures. Yeah. In, yeah. into the building. Uh, you only had to get temped once uh, at the start of the day. And, and then, you know, unless you weren't feeling well, you just went about your business. Right. Um, but in, in those 10 days, not only did we have to align the syllabi for those three courses, but we then had to create all of the lectures. <laughs> So I'm assuming this field in general wasn't a big slides course beforehand. Like you didn't even have slides. You had to just make it. Uh, we, I mean, we had the book, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I don't even, I don't have a physical copy of the book anymore, but um, yeah, we have the book. <laughs> <laughs> so from ground up, Dr. Wow. Putnam and I, went through week by, and we didn't do all of the slides because it's a 15 week semester, uh, which would require 14 lectures, 13 lectures. Um, We didn't do all of the, 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 the slideshows at once. Why not? You didn't, would you want to sleep that week? Like, yeah, come on. Yeah. Bang it out all (laughs) once. I have pulled exactly two all nighters my entire life. And yes, I like my sleep. So no, I didn't pull any all nighters to create these things. Um, uh, we we made like the first three that, okay. that those ten days, and then over the next three weeks, we would progressively continue because we yeah. we were working out how we were teaching it. Right, it it just happened to end up being a bit of uh, like Waldorf uh, and and Statler from the Muppets teaching acupuncture point location. Um, you know, we're just that's good. We're just cranky and tired and you know, making fun of each other while we're, uh, you know, teaching points. And it's, it, it became a comedy sketch. It, it was the Dr. Putnam and Dr. Illingworth show. Um, and it was just like, da 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 Hey, the Lung Channel. And, <laughs> and, and that's what it was. And it Tune was, in for this week's episode of. Tune in next week when our intrepid explorers take on the Heart Channel. Yeah. Um, so I, we we were able to pivot really quickly, uh, thankfully, to create all of the materials that we needed. And then having both Google Meet and Google Slides were then um, indispensable. Yeah. Right? Like they were so valuable to be able to have everybody in one place, uh, have the, the hand raising or the chat uh, to be able to, to present and share what we're, what we're teaching. Uh, because then if we needed to, to clarify something, pop open to a, a, you pop over to a different tab in your browser and right. bring up Google and find what you're looking for and then share that tab. Yeah. And that was our way to begin taking this information that, as you mentioned earlier, William was, was two dimensional during the lecture and at least begin to start making it three and four dimensional. I'm okay. thinking of a connection here. Mm-hmm. Um, and just for the audience's sake, all two of you. Thanks mom. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we just lost one. Thank you, Dr. Shea. And Robin, my bad. Okay, three. Yeah, you got three. Yeah, wow. Yeah, you're outcasting all of our hardcore fans. I'm so sorry. Um, 
you made the point earlier about like an Eastern Western uh, mm-hmm. medicine and methodology. So to make mm-hmm. that clarification, right. Eastern is it's geographical reference, right. Eastern is, is the Chinese arts, the, the Eastern arts as, of medicine. as uh, useful sometimes as uh, vast generalizations can be. Sure, sure, sure. Um, <laughs> now that we've overgeneralized and offended somebody. Yeah. Eastern, yeah. Eastern medicine and Eastern philosophy is often considered anything from the Middle East to Japan and down into Indonesia and uh, the archipelago that runs through that area of the world. Got mm-hmm. it. Yep. Um, it is usually a discussion between what can be considered a cultural medicine versus uh, standard practice or allopathic medicine. Um, right. the, the main conceptual difference between allopathic medicine versus uh, East Asian or Eastern uh, medicine um, is that allopathic medicine is uh, reductivist, is categorical. Everything has a single place. Everybody has a specialist. This is what the lung does. This is what the throat does. This is what the eyes do. There's a separate. Yes. They are worried about individual pieces. They are trying to find the one thing. They're trying to reduce it down to the one thing. And Eastern philosophy, East Asian medicine, its thing is relational. You know, the buzzword is holistic, right? It looks at the whole, but more, more so than that, it looks at the relationships of everything within the whole. Yeah. How is, for example, the, how is the lung playing along with the heart? How is the heart playing along with the liver? How does it all come together? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. Well, and, and where I'm seeing this this opportunity or this, this connection is like some of the things you're saying that you started to spin up in a teaching uh, context. I'm seeing this parallel. Sorry, let me try and bring it to a visualization for everybody else. <laughs> Not, not just stick it in my head where no one can have access yeah. to it. Maybe that's get a fine. Google slide if you want to just bring just it in. Just you know? forget this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> in the Eastern medicine, Western medicine, that, that generalization, you were in an Eastern teaching style, which is actually very folklore based or Technically, very didactic. It's, it's a very platonic method of teaching. Sure. Which is Greek, which is not Eastern. Well, precisely. It could be. So the, the <laughs> idea with that is usually uh, held to in the teaching of this medicine is that you bring a little bit of the medicine, you bring a little bit of the information to the student and you, you bank on the student putting it together for themselves to then ask the right question. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Right. And so there is an art to teaching to get people to ask the right question. And it is very (laughs) much so teaching by Jedi mind trick some days. It really <laughs> is. Especially when you take into account, if you have 30 people that you're teaching the same thing to, each one of those people will see it differently. Yeah. yeah. And, and you what, want them all to ask the same question though. <laughs> no, I don't. Oh. I don't. Because of the richness of this information, right. I want them to ask every single question that comes to their, to their mind. I, I, I give a disclaimer every time I, I have a new class that comes in and it goes, just to warn you all, I teach by throwing spaghetti at the wall. Whatever sticks will stick. If it falls to the ground, I will pick it back up and throw it at the wall again. <laughs> I don't care how many times I have to throw it at the wall. Again, <laughs> it doesn't matter. I don't care how many dust bunnies the spaghetti picks up. I don't care how much dog hair. I don't. I will continue throwing it at the wall until it is all on the wall. That's amazing. There you go, Josh. That's 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 a, a teaching. I, I can yeah. I can I can go with that. Yeah, spaghetti pedagogy. And right. uh, I will I will continue. To, I I like what you're saying though. Like this idea of spaghetti continuing. Go-to? Yeah, it's I mean it's great repetition it's continuing mm-hmm. to go back to it until they really get it or they're mm-hmm. processing right so it's great i'm curious so like for you guys i'm digging in even more we're kind of going in an unexpected direction which is kind of the teaching area that you were doing even though i knew we'd probably eventually get here <laughs> um which is so like you're obviously doing with a lot of questions back and forth i'm curious when you guys put lecture content online did you guys kind of just take 
kind of the the flow of it was questions will come when they come in or did you guys have a system for also like if a student triggered a question right when they were watching something mm. yeah how did you guys handle that dynamic of trying to so deal with that? When we first started putting together the slides and putting together the the lectures, we were trying to put out fires. Yeah. Right? <laughs> we were trying <laughs> to catch up. And yeah, we yeah. did. We did. And that first year taught me a lot. So what you'll find on my slides now is pretty much the same thing that it was then. It's It's bare bones. Yeah, yeah. Right. It's just enough information to get people thinking about it. Okay. And it's all the information that they will be tested on, not just by me, but on their board exams when they get there after they uh, graduate. Yeah. And it, I give them enough. Okay. Right. Right. Yeah. Be, it, in the slides. Cause then when I come back in over top and start talking, I don't know when enough is enough. And honestly, I don't care. Because you've because, got more spaghetti to sling. Uh, yes. Yeah. So I part the other part of the disclaimer that I give new students is I am going to treat you like you are practitioners mm. and that you know this stuff already. And in doing so, it's like learning a new language. The best way to do it is to immerse yourself. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. I think that Auth- authentic and immersive experience is something that just helps you take it in and mm-hmm. internalize. Yeah. And it takes a lot of repetition, of, but yeah, well, it takes it takes a lot of repetition, and it encourages asking questions. Right. Yeah. I tell them there are no stupid questions. I don't care if you want me to tell you how to spell something versus what is the esoteric nature of this of the of yin and yang. Right. I'll go for forty five minutes talking about that if you really want, or I can <laughs> tell you it's spelled Y I N. I don't care. <laughs> that's that's good. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> right? Because... But I do, yeah, go ahead. I was just going to highlight something that you were mentioning. The way you tackle the videos, I want to highlight this for those who are listening. Like the, I really love that you mentioned you, you went with kind of bare bones and mm-hmm. kind of the base of what they need. And mm-hmm. I mentioned that because I like Will and I have worked with people all the time, creating video content for courses and things like that. And the amount of times I've heard, like, this is my one chance to give them everything I know. And then like, we get like slides and videos of just like bullet points upon bullet points upon uh, transitions. <laughs> um, People are like, pausing the video stuff. trying to zoom in because they yeah. can't yeah. see it all. Yeah, they're, they're trying to process and they're like going back and forth between the video just to make sure they can catch everything. So mm-hmm. I want to highlight that because I think that's something really great that you guys did, which is the fact of the matter is this isn't your one chance to teach them absolutely everything. And two, if you view it that way, like fire hose them, they're not going to get it either. And part of like your point, part of this is immersing in questions Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. giving them base so that you can start to work through the details with them. And that's, I mean, that's, I think really cool. I think I have a unique perspective in that the information that I'm teaching is verifiably 2,200 years old. Mm -hmm. (laughs) There is oral history that this medicine goes back five millennia to 10 millennia, depending upon who you talk to. Right. I know that our oldest document is from 200 BC. Wow. Radiocarbon dated and the it has charts for the point locations and the channel locations, and they are almost identical to the ones we use today. Wow. wow. There is no way in hell I am getting 2,200 years of information into the heads of one to 30 students over the course of three semesters. What is that with you in sleep? Why? why? You can't yeah. like this. Come I on. like to sleep. <laughs> Immersive and, all and day, like all night. Listen, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I will be very frank. They don't pay me enough to go all day, all night. Okay. If, if I create a mentorship program and the, the my mentee wants to to have that sort of immersive experience, fine. Let's make it you know commensurate. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> you can come live with me, and we'll you can be my apprentice, and we'll make this work. Yeah, you know I have yeah. student loans to pay. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, and I have to eat, right? Yeah. Um, the, the thing about, you know, setting up the, the slideshows the way that I do, because the slideshow is only part of it. I, I yeah. go through and, and go through all of the point locations in the book with them online, and I talk about them. 
you know, I use this point more than that point. I use that point less than this point, And here's why, right? Um, everyone is inherently intelligent in one way or another. And just because they are not intelligent in the way that I am does not mean that they are not intelligent. Hmm. I have I have a story about this. I have a, I have a story about this. I, I warned you earlier, Josh. I have stories. Oh, I'm excited. <laughs> Dig into it. Let's do it. So <laughs> I, tr- I, I, I meet every student face to face who they are, where they are, what they are at that time. Doesn't matter. And I will just repeat, like if someone needs me to repeat something, I will repeat it. And without mm-hmm. judgment, they may not have heard me. They may not have understood me. Right. So I had a student come to me one day at the end of a, a, a what was this? Chinese medical, mas- Chinese medical massage. It's one of the courses that I teach over the, over the summer. And they said, Charles, every time you teach, I'm always waiting for the other shoe to drop. And I oh. said, I said, what do you mean? She's like, you, you just repeat things. Like you don't get mad, <laughs> right? You, 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 you just, you just say it like it's no thing. I was like, well, I hate to break it to you. It's not. Yeah. Right. Just because you didn't get it the first time doesn't mean you won't get it the second or the seventh. I don't care. That's amazing. And she cried. Oh, this is this. This was a student who was in uh, her fifties, and likely had issues learning because yeah. of either uh, dyscalculia or um, attention deficit issues. Or um, there's another word for a condition that I can't remember off the top dyslexia? of my head. Dyslexia. Dyslexia. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, it's been a long day. <laughs> Salud. <laughs> so. If you, if you approach all of these students, whether you're online or in person with kindness and compassion and, and just give them what they need, yeah. it often changes lives while they are learning. Yeah. I, I'm, <clears throat> I've got a pivot in mind and we got to go one direction, but the pot, but like, I'm just touched uh, just to hear how much your teacher's heart is, yeah. is evident. Like we, I've, t- Josh and I work with teachers and <laughs> it's not always you get to hear as, as much of a commitment as you've uh, demonstrated tonight. So that's just, that's just awesome. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I think well, it's uh, to the, whatever pivot you got, Will, you can take it there, but I would, I would comment that like, I think it brings it back to something we've talked about before on the podcast. And I've talked about before with other coworkers in the area is like, we can develop online courses. We can create content. We can use the technology we're going to use, but at the end of the day, it still comes back to, the instructor and how much they care about the student that's actually going to make the difference. And there's a lot of stuff we can do to take away the, the hurdles that might tech wise get in the way or make it make content more clear, make it easier to get to stuff. But it, at the core, if the instructor is not caring and taking that, that step forward to teach, no matter what delivery you're in, that's going to be the key that kind of breaks it apart a lot of times. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I commend you in that that perspective that you're coming at from, because I think that's really it's it can be rare and it's it's cool that you're, you're coming at it from that end. It's beautiful. And and listener, for those not watching, Charles and I were pretty much nodding our heads along in the same cadence as we are wont to do. <laughs> I just noticed that and I was like, oh, smokes, we are too much like brothers. It came standard with the operating system with the last name. Yeah, yeah. Need, need a reboot. Um, okay, the, the the close out conversation point. We've we've heard about meet. We've heard about um, wow slides and just the play mm-hmm. that like Google Suite did in your mm-hmm. your process and and it was a lot to pivot. Mm-hmm. Kudos. Um, you had talked with us about a specific app and and this may not be relevant to ninety nine percent of our listeners unless you share this with a bunch of your acupuncturist folks. Yeah, but I do want to get to an app you told us told us about because I think it's a good demonstration of creating 
a tool to reach a specific level of study. So what's the, the app Ab- you have? For- Absolutely. So the, the app that I have is called Manual of Acupuncture. And it's not it's not a word that I need to spread to any acupuncture students because they all know. <laughs> they have they, to have they, it. <laughs> they, they, pretty much, right? If they don't get the book or the, the flashcards, they get the app. And yeah. they, they need it, right? Because the acupuncture point locations are the ABCs of differential diagnosis and treating patients with acupuncture. Uh, The thing about the app is that for the most part, it takes the book and chops it up into uh, readily digestible portions. Cool. Um, With acupuncture, there are considered to be 12 primary channels and each of the primary uh, channels or meridians has a segment in the app and there's a web-based version of the app, and it's on Android and iPhone. Um, I'm not getting paid for any of those plugs. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Hashtag not a sponsor is our yep. shtick. <laughs> Hashtag not a sponsor. Um, yes. So the uh, it, it breaks down the channel. It breaks down each of the segments of the channel and then each of the individual points. And wow. then it has body regions. It, it has maps of different areas. There is, there's even a segment where you can take quizzes to quiz your knowledge of the acupuncture mm. points. Awesome. And there's a section where you can create uh, like your own point protocols and put in your own information about some of the points. And it's just, I, I use this app as a practitioner daily. Yeah. And as a teacher, multiple times during a lecture. Is it one time purchase? It looks maybe like a subscription model for the app. Or? So the app, both the app and the web based app are one time purchase. Oh, great. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, listener, it might seem niche, but I'm looking at the pictures of it. Charles gave me a pretty good rundown of it beforehand during the episode. This is one of those things that to me, like when I had that person come into my team and say, how do I teach scuba online? They needed to make this app. They, yeah. they, they need to find a way like to get to, because I'm looking at this one screenshot here. It's literally got people on screen. There's diagrams, there's pause mm-hmm. play. There's, you know, the Chinese description. There's some English description. There's there, there are available. even There are even videos on the app for how to needle some of most of the points, if not all of the points. Like mm-hmm. at the end of the day, not that that replaces full-time instruction or your board's exams. I'm hoping people don't get this app to go become acupuncturists on in, in the back alley. Good luck. Weird, weird thing to do. Get um, really <laughs> good malpractice insurance if that's how you're going to go about it. Or just don't do it. Hashtag please don't yeah. do it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, don't do it. You're Legally, you're not allowed. Right. But uh, you know what I mean? I think this, this is a great example. Like, hey, how do I teach this? Uh, mm-hmm. Go make it. Make this yeah. into something that can be taught because this app looks awesome and you're mm-hmm. you're you know clearly the proof of the uh, practice so well for now <laughs> um charles i think the last time we were recorded together probably would have been 10 plus years ago on dad's show is that the case that's was probably that the, the case was that the thanksgiving show I don't even know what it would have been. I'm just assuming Charles and I, my our father ran a radio show for about 10 years mm-hmm. on a Pennsylvania regional. Um, and network. on an AM station. Mm-hmm. Yep. AM 560 and AM 990 AM. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and Charles was the engineer for quite some time. And then I was yeah. his engineer, but we've both mm-hmm. were on the show many times. You lucked out because when I was the engineer, it was at the four and five in the morning slots before Ooh. it became the seven in the morning show. Ooh. Yeah. yeah eventually yeah. it was the eight and the nine and I was happy with the eight and the nine. So yeah, rub Ooh. it in. It's always better for the third child. <laughs> rub it in. I, I cleared the path for you, yeah. sir. He got rid of operation. He did engineering <laughs> in the morning for you. You are where you're at because of Charles. <laughs> you know, that's truer than you know. <laughs> uh. Thanks for joining us tonight. Yeah. Uh, this has just been a fun one, and it's it's uh, hopefully not the last. All in due time. Awesome. Yeah. All in due time. Thank you very much for having me, gentlemen. Absolutely. And uh, until the next time, we're going to wrap up here in just a second with a little bit of debrief, but uh, thanks again, and hold on for just a second, folks. Wow. That's, that's all I can say. I've, I feel like we we just rode a ride. What do you, <laughs> what do you think? Intense. 
meeting and more academic y version of me. Like did I you didn't think that it, was, it existed. It was possible. I didn't think it's <laughs> oh. um yeah dang that's uh yeah Charles has he has stories. He said it a couple times but he's not wrong. <laughs> There's so much I still want to know what moonlighting as a photo booth operator was like and uh want to read that chapter yep. um, of the autobiography. But yeah, I mean, like, man, there's so much that's really interesting about that whole experience of what he described, both from like him teaching and just like the brief. We, we really focused on his teaching because it got way too interesting to go anywhere else. Um, right, right. Like the the learning aspect of it, too, just the the very interesting way they had to kind of, I think, pit, really at the end of the day not do online but do kind of hybrid i mean that's really really what it was it's it's hybrid content yeah at some point there are certain things like like if they could not have gone to physical face-to-face they would have had to create some kind of artificial teaching tool a Mm -hmm. human body thing to give them that physical experience i mean they're learning a physical trait they have to be able to do it so it makes sense i mean there i get i maybe there are some things you can't teach online maybe yeah fully online yeah i think there's a point of like they found places where they could make compromises to go hybrid so that they could get more time to do what they needed to do in person yeah by breaking people up and not be able to do them all at the same time like so i think that happened i think there's some key takeaways of like okay what did they do well they flipped things a bit first of all they they kind of pushed the the content the kind of more partaking of information to yep. the online space although i want to highlight something they did lectures but he does talk a bit about how there was still interaction with them like right synchronous online like it was it was or asynchronous it wasn't online. Watch like it was these videos it was come time. and listen and talk yeah um and so that's happening but it, they're still you know giving content they're still we didn't get too much into how they assess things online because that wasn't really the focus that's but fair. they're they're imparting video content um and an important part of what charles talks about which is when they're doing that whether intentionally or just purely because they were in the fire trying to figure it out they, <laughs> they they gave the base in those videos and then handled the rest through whether online q a communication talking or with their hybrid component of being face-to-face in the actual uh practicing and learning uh because they had to learn on real bodies real people right so they handled some of that there um, I think it's an important takeaway for a lot of us who are designing courses and even instructors that like, guys, we got to stop doing this thing where we just like, oh, this is my chance to teach them all of this. And so they get like a ton of videos and like 15 different assignments and no, like find the base knowledge. And then to what Charles was talking about, like a lot of this is finding space to kind of build in those places for students to actually be not just encouraged to ask questions, but I think in places forced to ask questions Sure, um, where they have to be put in that. Um be interesting we didn't talk about this but if they really had to force heavily online it'd be interesting how maybe with more time you could leverage good discussion principles online to get kind of discussion and questions going um about stuff on a content base yeah how 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 do they balance that lecture time versus discussion engagement time yeah yeah Uh, i i have not had i don't think myself that long of a conversation with him about his his process so that was uh really insightful for me just as his brother like holy you did you did go through that (laughs) that was that was rough um but i think there's some a lot of hope in there not not just from like what i mentioned towards the end of the interview with like wow I'm, i'm really touched by his heart for for teaching and his heart for learning but like there's a lot of hope in there that even if acupuncturists didn't give up and they found a way to persevere and they found ways to compromise and they found ways to make the best of it. You know, I'm, I'm hoping it's my deep prayer. We don't have any more pandemics ahead of us. Um, But if you have the need to create an online acupuncturist degree, you know, what would it take to to do that? Mm -hmm. If you had a need to create an online tanks degree, what would it take to do that? Like whatever it is, Clearly it's by us. Okay. And then possibly a micro app course that we made. And then, uh, <laughs> you know, because we, we detailed that one. Um, and then, you know, some live action in a bank, uh, tank going around. So that's what I'm taking away from it. Bank um, in a tank. Take yeah. a tank in a bank. That's like, bank. other way around. That would be, that would be both are intense, but tank, tank in a bank in a bank in lank. See what we it took did? it too far. 
No, uh, I see what you did, but we took it too far. <laughs> um, no, so like, yeah, I think to that point, I think, okay, first of all, just hot take in education in general, okay? That I think highlights this. The reason why I think it's important for us to have these conversations and look at what we're doing is my hot take in education is while I think there's a lot of things that can change in education, things are going on, hot take. Um, I think hybrid is going to be one of the methods that starts to become much more dominant. And I think uh, those who are out there saying online is the future of where things are going. I personally think you're wrong. I think what's happened through the pandemic, what's been happening through different pieces is we've realized how technology can be used. Um, some of us, hashtag me and Will, already knew that. Um, but <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> people are catching up and we're learning new things too in the process. Um, but I think we're seeing how both coming together can actually create a better learning experience, which is interesting because as we know from talking to a you know, friend of ours, uh justin harbin has been on the podcast a couple of times there's actually a lot of research too to say actually hybrid is a really strong model of education that kind of leverages the best of both worlds yeah. um to teach and so i think charles is an example while it was forced and happened some of the stuff they're doing like stick with it beyond even just having to like you're you're right. finding ways to move some content you were spending time in class dealing with into a hybrid location into a digital location with technology that allows you to do this. So then you can also focus more uh, in the face-to-face -face time on the stuff that you need to like the practicing and the work. Um, and I think you're going to see more of that. And for those who don't do it, I think you're going to end up starting to fall behind a bit because I think hybrid is going to become a more dominant model, both from what students are looking for and what it just produces some better experiences for students. Dude, I think you've got it. I agree. I think that's a really good prediction on it. And and because even as we've worked in online education, we've seen where the biggest issues are with it. And yeah. we uh, have been at the table where the numbers are talked about and the numbers are and aren't being made. Right. And like, yeah. there's still a huge demand, no matter what you do in the ease of creating an online program, there's a huge demand for the on campus experience. Right? You can't, yeah. you can't stop that. So or at least the, the asynchronous person to person components, yeah. I think, that's uh there's just there's part of it and i think it comes back to what charles talks about when he's talking not necessarily explicitly stating but as you and i commented on by looking at the heart of what he's doing at the end of the day i do believe with all the technology all the things we're doing the professor and the amount of energy and effort they invest into each student and care they show for their student is going to go much longer than all the other stuff will and i talk about with learning yeah. experience ux it doesn't mean we ignore that stuff yeah. it does mean though like instructor you don't get a pass just because there's a site that they go to um nothing all people view that that's i'm characterizing that but i think sometimes yeah. we can emphasize the content that's in the online course and forget that that content needs a professor who cares and is active with their students for it to really do anything um and uh, i think charles is a good example of that here here uh bring us home dude i'm I, yeah. i've got nothing i love well, it nothing else. that's it that's all we got for you uh next episode uh charles comes back and talks about no, i'm just joking <laughs> <laughs> high tech after, after dark yeah, high tech after dark um no uh next episode we actually kick off a new series okay we are going to be kicking off a new series about ungrading okay we're going to be talking about what does ungrading look like uh, how can it be done well um i think will and i'll get a bit both into the theory we're we're, we're looking at some guests coming on for the series uh, but also we'll get from some of the theory as well as uh like how it can actually be done we're not doing all of that in the actual episode um i'm saying all of this for the series okay so that episode will not cover all of those <laughs> things um but we're kicking it off so if you're interested in ungrading both from just like why it's a, a thing you could do or uh, how it's actually possible because most most learning management systems are not set up well for it but will and i have had a, several years of experience to be able to speak to how you can do it well um check out that series we kick that off next week on episode 91 uh just a reminder hit us up on our socials at high tech podcast uh that's both for twitter and youtube and our website hightechpod.us if we're doing the video stuff right it's down here or it's, over there nope yep over there there you go i just it's, dab on our show you did just dab on our show um, and I don't know how I feel about that. Um, anyway, uh, ch check us out online. Uh, we'd love to connect with you there, either through Twitter, um, YouTube. Make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube, folks. We just started. I think we only have two subscribers, and I'm pretty sure they're Will and I. Um, 
definitely so, me. One of them is definitely uh, me. One of them is me. I'm now trying to remember if I've subscribed to our own YouTube. Um, we could have three if not for you. Let's yeah, go. Let's do it. Okay, so um, subscribe to our YouTube, please. That'd be fantastic. Anyway, thank you again for joining us for another week as we continue to learn what it looks like to harness technology even down to the needle. Okay? In the classroom, whether online or in person or hybrid. We need to start adding that to the end of our thing. Um, so, anyway, see ya. See ya.